everybody. Welcome to the Prognard. I am your host, Jacob Williams. Today I wanted to do a follow-up video to my rules explanation on Iki, a game of Edo Artisans, and I wanted this video to be more of a strategy guide. Now maybe strategy guide might kind of be the wrong word. Maybe what we can call this is uh, analysis on how you score points. I think that might actually be better. Um, I've played this game, I don't know, f half a dozen times, and I think I've only won it twice. So I don't know if, uh, like I said, I don't know if the best thing I can do is do a strategy guide, but I think I've got some, something to say about the point analysis. So that's what this video is going to be about. <clears throat> Also, a little bit further into the video, I'm going to have a correction on the rules that I wasn't aware of that the, and I wish I uh, would have remembered his name, but a person on BGG corrected me on how the rule, on how a certain rule works, and uh, this person was uh, the person that retranslated the uh, rules. So I guess I got two things wrong. I think I said in the in my rules explanation video that there wasn't a good English translation of the rules. Uh, that has since been corrected, so uh, you can find that file on uh, BGG. And then uh, he, uh, this person also corrected me on um, how the harmony bonus uh, scores, and I'll get into that here in a bit. So let's go go ahead and get started. Um, I broke this down into a couple of different sections into the way I think these things should go. And, um, let me, uh, just put out there. I hope you guys enjoy the video quality a lot better. I finally got myself a tripod and I'm using it here to see how it works out. Uh, some videos in the future I might do handheld just cause I might need to move the camera around to different aspects, but trying it here and hopefully you guys like it and appreciate, uh, investment in the channel such uh, such as it is okay anyway i've got this uh, sheet of paper where i've broken things down um in a fairly logical way on how to score points so let's start off my uh, point analysis um actually let me back up let's talk about like uh the idea of uh this video is that you kind of learn how some of the point mechanisms work and you're going to use that to build your own strategy. So that's kind of where we're going with this. I probably should have stated that at the beginning. And maybe one of these days I'll get better at video introductions. All right. So I've broken this down into the main ways you can score points. Uh, you can use workers, closing time bonus, resource, buildings, and tokens. Those are the five ways, five main ways I see that you can score points in this game. Let's start off with the easiest, which is the workers. And then I've got this subdivided into uh, salary points and end of game scoring. Let's take a look at salary points, okay? These are probably the most straightforward way to score points in the game. If I can get my tripod to cooperate with me, all right? Uh, what you can see on each of these workers is that sometimes you can score points just by making a deal with them, like right here, or you'll get these points when you collect salary during a uh, close of business phase. And I just picked out a few cards at random to kind of uh, show this concept. All right, got the uh, Cropier. Uh, that's French. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. The Croppier. Someone who runs a gambling establishment. I actually uh, Googled that. Uh, I got a sandal maker, a ukiyo-e artist, and then, okay, I did these for bragging rights. These are the two uh, promos that uh, someone picked up for me at Gen Con. And just wanted to get those on camera and show them off. All right, so those are the easiest way to score points with workers, either by making a deal with them to get victory points or to uh, score off of their um, points at the end of the game. Or sorry, um, to get their salary at the end of a uh, closing round or to get their points when you make a deal with them. All right, 
So that's one way you can get points with workers. The other way is to get them at the end of the game when you score them. All right. So for each unique color uh, worker you have at the end of the game, you'll score the number of those squared. What do I mean by that? I'm throwing some math out there. Let's look at yellow situation real quick. Yellow has two unique color workers. They've got a brown worker and then they have a purple worker. Okay, so that's two unique workers and two squared is four. So the maximum you're going to be able to earn at in-game scoring off of unique workers is 25 because there's five unique colors, five squared is 25. All right. Now, later on in the video, I'm really, especially when I cover buildings, I'm going to talk about uh, the point cost of things. And this is a little bit hard to do with workers. Actually, let me back up. What do I mean by point costs? Uh, getting slightly ahead of myself, for every five mon you have, that'll cost you a point, okay? Um, because five mon at the end of the game is worth one point. So if I want to hire the Cropier, that's like I'm giving up one victory point. Because those five mon could have just been used um, as a point at the end of the game. Now in this instance, even if I get the level one payout, that's totally worth it, right? Because I'm going to get six bonus points uh, when normally, I, I mean, I gave up one victory point to get uh, six victory points. So that's a pretty good deal, right? Now if I have a level two Cropier, I'm losing points, which is bad, but yeah whatever so you probably want to think about that as you're hiring workers think about you know how many points am i giving up to get these new points okay um so uh, yeah definitely uh, keep that in mind and i'm using uh this opportunity cost for a lack of a better word in some of my analysis further in the video um so just be aware of that uh, it's hard to measure the opportunity cost when you're talking about hiring workers because they could have discounts on them because they weren't hired in previous rounds. Um, I don't know. You might be flush with cash. I, I don't know. It's hard to factor those costs in, but I do want you to know that they exist and that I'll be discussing them later under certain areas. All right, so let's move on to closing time bonus. And this is where... I got this wrong in the previous video, okay? So what did I get wrong? Okay, so it, during the uh, closing time, when you do the uh, humanity bonus or the new rule book calls it harmony bonus, here's what you're going to do. It, you still This still counts as a block, okay? But a block always has uh, four uh, individual shops in it or, or four workers possible in it, okay? And then there's like a bonus group, which is the four inner corners, okay? So this person and this person has the opportunity to be scored twice, okay? So if we were doing a uh, harmony bonus right here, what are we going to look at? Well, yellow's going to score nine, uh, sorry, um, four points here and then uh, two points. They're going to score six points, okay? Because they have two brown workers times two meeples, so that's four. Then there's two purple in the group, but they only have one meeple. So it's going to be four uh, plus two is going to be six. Okay? And then in this block, red is going to score two points. Because two purple, two purple times one red meeple is two. Now we score this inner block. Okay? There's two purples in the inner block. And red has two meeples, so two times two is four. So that's how that scoring is supposed to work. The These corner uh, shops overlap. And I know I'm using the wrong words. Sorry about that. I think with my hand gestures and the visual, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So that's another way you can score points. Now, I, I almost like to think that these are bonus points except for maybe the corner 
because they cost too. You're going to have a sunk cost when you hire these workers. So hopefully you've already made the decision that hiring that worker is going to generate some VPs for you. And hopefully that I like to think of this as a bonus. Okay. So with some strategic placement, you're going to squeeze some extra bonus points out of those, uh, out of that investment you've already made. All right. So that's another way of scoring points with your workers. All right, let's talk about how you can score points with resources. Let me get my camera down here. So at the end of the game, some of your resources are worth points. A Koban is worth three points. A Lumber is worth one point. And as I mentioned, every five Mon is worth a point. Okay. Now, you want to think about this when you're hiring workers. So if you hire a worker that gives you a lumber as their salary, you really want to think of that as they're giving me a point. All right. Um, and then an, uh, you can't really think that way with rice or sandals because those aren't initially worth points. And that could change, uh, you know, depending on if you get these buildings. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, one thing I want to make you aware of with the Koban is that there's only one place in the game to get a Koban, and that is this space up here, this shop action, where you change out uh, six Mon to get one Koban, okay? The way you should really think about that space is it's allowing you to convert the payout from of Mon from five to uh, from five to one to uh, two to one okay and obviously a minimum of three so I want you should think about this space let me get three point or sorry turn my mon exchange from five to one to two to one all right is there really anything else to talk about resources not really I mean like most euro games the resources, or sorry, the points for resources are really kind of the last thing that you scramble for. I don't know that you can really build a strategy on that, but something to think about. All right, let's get into something a little more meatier. Let's uh, discuss these buildings, all right? And here's where I'm going to kind of bring it back in my reference sheet to uh, help explain some concepts. All right, so with the buildings... One thing that I've tried to accurately represent, and let me bring up my sheet here, and let's just start off with the well. Notice here on the well that I've put that the points you get is 2x, where x is the, is the uh, player's firefight score. All right? So the maximum firefight anyone can have is 10. So here's how I kind of did the analysis on that. So your realistic victory points is 2x minus 4. Now, where does the minus four come in? Well, it's going to cost you four lumber to build the well, right? And remember, lumber is worth one point each. So you're sacrificing four points um, in something I'm just going to call an opportunity cost for economics to get that card, all right? So you really have to factor that in when you're getting this. So that way you know that your maximum net points is going to be 16. So if you crank your firefight up to 10, the most this is ever going to pay out is 16 victory points. All right. Now, 16 points for one thing is quite a bit. So don't don't make it seem like uh, I am writing that off. But you do want to know that it's not worth 20 points, which is what someone might think off the top of their head with a only a surface analysis. All right. Let's look at the storehouse. The storehouse will pay out 4x, where x is the number of rice bales that you have at the end of the game. Uh, but the real net cost is going to be 4x minus 4, because it's going to cost you a koban and a wood. Alright, because that's add that up and that's 4 points. So, the good thing is there is no point ceiling on this per se, because you could have infinite rice bales in theory. I mean, I don't know what a realistic ending total is. I think I've seen someone get like six of them before, but just make sure as you're doing that, that you're going to need, uh, 
one rice bale minimum to break even and to get up to the max net points of you know some of the other buildings you're going to have to have um you know five or six of uh, those rice bales to really make it work for you all right now let's look at the merchant house now the merchant house has a payout of 3x where x is the number of sandals a player has and then your realistic uh, net cost is going to be or sorry your net points is going to be 3x minus 5 and again you have no ceiling because you can have you know as many sandals as you can get um which one of these do I think is better between the merchant house and the storehouse? Um, that's a good question. Uh, rice is kind of easy to get, but you're going to be consuming a lot of rice if you have a lot of workers, okay? There's a couple of spots to get rice. You can get rice at this spot. Um, you can get it at this spot right here for Amon. Um, and like I said, lots of workers will give you rice, but you're also going to be spending it if you get workers and you don't get them retired. So maybe sandals are slightly better, but sandals has a higher cost, right? It's going to cost you five points to get it, whereas this one's only going to cost you four. And you get a little less, um, you get a worse rate. You get one point less uh, per sandal. So just something to think about. Sandals are a little bit easier to get, but this pays out a little bit better. Eh, I don't know. You're going to have to play some games and determine that accordingly. All right, and then let's get to the easy ones. These are the ones with the straight payout. Uh, let's see. The inn has a face value of 10 points, but it's costing you 4 points. So net uh, 6 points. The shrine give you 24 points, but... Cost you eight points to get it. Uh, max net points of 16. And then the Kabuki Theater, uh, 28 points. Face value, nine points in opportunity cost. So max net points of 19. Those are pretty straightforward. Obviously, the Kabuki Theater is going to give you the best bang for your buck. But getting to Koban is going to be challenging, at least in my experience. You really have to plan it to get that Koban as you can only get it in this space and um, no other workers get, uh, let you get a Koban. There might be a worker that'll let you build for one less Koban, but I'm thinking I'm mistaking. I think most of the build actions let you um, give you a discount on uh, for wood. Not 100% sure. I guess I could go through all the cards, but I probably should have done that before filming. All right, so that's buildings just remember that there's an opportunity cost when you're uh, buying those buildings and that opportunity co cost is the points you could have collected just by not doing it and i would say that's more important with these where the payout is conditional maybe not so much with these three i mean if you've got the resources the the point increase is going to be instantaneous you don't have to worry about breaking even uh over here like you do or sorry, you don't have to worry about breaking even here like you do over there. Okay, so that'll take us to tokens. So let's look at our tokens over here. So there's two types of tokens that you can collect throughout the game. You can get these fish tokens or you can get these tobacco tokens. Now this one is fun because of the payout. You almost need a math degree. So the, the payout on the fish tokens is... The summation of uh, I equals zero to N, I plus one. And then you have uh, two times that you can get uh, seven bonus points available. But you don't have to do all that math. I've got the payout chart right here. All right, and this payout chart is in the book. You don't really need to know the math. I just want to feel smart and I did that uh, math for you. So that's pretty self-explanatory. One get one fish token that's worth three, two is worth six, four is worth ten, and the fourth one is worth seven, uh, fifteen. Sorry, and then if you get the uh, summer or the or the winter fish, uh, you can get uh, fourteen bonus points. And again, you have to remember the opportunity cost, right? Because when you get this fish, you're paying seven coins for it. Um, 
But in a way, you can almost, I mean, because that's a victory point, right? Like one and a half victory points. But in a way, you're turning that from uh, a one to five uh, victory point to mon ratio to uh, one to one. So that's really nice, too. Uh, here, the exchange is a little worse because you're having to pay nine to get seven. But that's still better than the five to one at the end of the game. All right. And then the last tokens are the tobacco tokens. And again, think about the payout. For four mon, you're going to get three victory points on this token. This one's two to two. So you're really lowering that mon to victory point ratio, which is important. And then if you get a pipe, you get to multiply these by two. So at the end of the game, this right here is only worth five victory points. But you add in a pipe, and then all of a sudden it's worth uh, 10. So, you know, evaluate what kind of leverage you're getting for the money you're spending on a pipe. And it's giving you a firefight. I, I don't know how to quantify that, but, you know, that's something. Um, I don't know that there's too much else to say. I think that's about it on the ways you can score points. And then I did my correction on the rules. So there you go. There is my victory point analysis for Iki, a game of Edo Artisans. I hope this helps you think about the game in a new way. And if you use some of these ideas and you win a game, I'd love to hear about it. So with that, I'm Jacob Williams and you've been watching The Prognard.